And welcome to John Harden High School for tonight, 17th District Fire Girls Soccer Action. It'll be the 8-4-1 Central, Central Harden Bruins taking on the 0-10 John Harden Bulldogs. We're now going to turn it over to Edson. our PA announcer for tonight's starting lineups. Number four, Taylor Edson. Number five, Paige Bratcher. Number 10, McKenna Johnson. Number 12, Ava Stiff. Number 15, Haley Panther. Number 17, Cassidy Gent. Number 19, Audra Disselkamp. Number 23, Elizabeth Howe. Number 24, Ava McGee. And number 25, Alicia Potom. Your head coaches for the Lady Bruins are Justin Maddock, Eric Kravitsky, and Michaela Knapper. All right. Get on your feet. Let's introduce our Lady Bulldogs. Number zero, we have Madison Santin. Number one, Drea Douglas. Number two, Moana De La Rosa Pagan. Number three, Andy Riley. Number four, Ashley Reisner. Number eight, Katherine Uptograph. Number nine, Jordan Rowlett. Number 11, DJ Quiroz. Number 12, Jenna Libert. Number 16, Bailey Dickens. Number 20, Carly Crowfoot. Coaches are Kaz Muhammad and Kelsey Yates. So there we Good have our starting lineups for tonight's ball game. Again, for the Bruins, it was Shelby Edson, Taylor Edson, Paige Bratcher, McKenna Johnson, Ava Stith, Haley Panner, Cassidy Gent, Audra Disselkamp, Elizabeth Howell, Ava McGee, and Alicia Potom in goal. For the Bulldogs, Treya Douglas, Juana De La Rosa Pagan, Andy Wiley, Ashley Reisner, Catherine Updegraff, Jordan Rowlett, DJ Kieros, Jenna Livert, Bailey Dickens, Carly Crowfoot, and in goal for the Bulldogs will be Maddie Santon. This is a HD, HCEC TV television production. HCEC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools live channel programming brought to you in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. Central Hardin will have the opening possession of tonight's ball game. Sends it down. That's in there for Central Harden. John Harden, that's Dickens there. And now Kiros comes over to add some pressure. Back to Dissel Camp to Panner again. Shot there. In! And Haley Panner with the first goal of the day on the pass from Dissel Camp. With 39-31, so just 29 seconds into the ball game.
Panner with it again. Now she backs it out. Bratcher sent it towards the middle of the field. Taylor, uh, sorry, Shelby Edson now with it to Bratcher back to Shelby Edson. Panner back outside to Bratcher. Trying to get that one to Johnson. She does have possession, sends it up. No one there. That'll be tracked down by Crowfoot. Goes out off of John Harden. Throw in central. Quick throw in, getting it to Johnson in the middle. Sends it out. So Kyros with it. Back to the middle. And Disselkamp now with it for the Bruins. Johnson back to Penner. Chipped forward, racing in a stiff. Rowlett will punch that one out. It'll go out and be a throw in for the Bruins. Gonna throw it in. De La Rosa Bagan tries to clear it. And it went over the end line, so it'll be a corner kick for the Bruins. Panner will go to take that one. Shelby Edson will come up from her defensive position. She's going to take it to a short corner to Bratcher. Bratcher turns, gives it right back to Panner. Panner finding some room shot. Went off of Libert. Bratcher now with it on the outside. To Stiff, who tries to get it to Johnson. And then we sent up the field by Reisner. Edson there with it. She'll play it back to Potom. Potom outside to Gent. Trying to get that one to Taylor Edson. It goes out, throw in John Harden. Dickens to throw this one in. So back to Library, kicks that one straight up. Howell gets it over to Stith. Stith's just gonna send it forward. Edson racing to it. Rowlett just escorts it back to Santon. Santon punts that one away to Reisner. Now Kiros with it for the Bulldogs. That goes out. Throw in Central Harden. Quick throw in that time from McGee. Edson with it again. Back to the outside for Johnson. Johnson will cross. It's off a bulldog and sent in there for the save. Johnson now with it. She's going to leave it off for Edson on the outside. Liber closes in for the Bulldogs. Cross, and that goes over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for the Bulldogs. It'll be a Liber that'll take this one. Panner gets it. It's taken back. And now Panner again with it. She'll send it up the outside. Rowlett will send that out. It'll be a throw in for the Bruins. Stiff to throw this one in. And in to Johnson. Del Rosa back on there. Taylor Edson's shot goes wide right into the side net. Another goal kick for the Bulldogs. Up the left side. Panner there again for the Bruins to get possession back. Lays it back to Bratcher. Bratcher will send it back to Shelby Edson. Lays it back to Potom. And then right back out to Shelby Edson. Panner to Bratcher. That one goes out and be a throw in John Harden. Delarosa Pagan to send this one in.
Tanner gets it right back for the Bruins. She's going to send it across the field. Dickens there for John Harden. Sends it back the other way. Stith now with it back to Bratcher. For the Bruins to the middle of the field. Disselkamp with it. She'll send it to the outside for Taylor Edson. Taylor going to send it for Johnson. Down into the corner. Livert in front of her crossing there. Trying to get it to Panner. Out of the box. Howell lays it back. Disselkamp shot. That will go wide right and will be a goal kick for John Harden. 33-45 to go in our opening half. 29 seconds into the ball game. Haley Painter sort of the only goal of the game for the Bruins, giving them a 1-0 lead. Battle for it out near midfield, back and forth. Bratcher with it now outside to Stith. Tanner with it. Trying to squeeze it to Edson right at the top of the box. Edson shot left foot. It's high. Another goal kick for the Bulldogs. up the left side, or sorry, right side for the Bulldogs. Kiros there, going to be chipped forward. Douglas with it. Kiros getting that one for Reisner. McGee gets it back for the Bruins. Shelby Edson sends it to Taylor Edson. Howell now with it. She's going to send it down the center trying to get to Panner. To the outside, crosses back for Edson. De La Rosa Pagan there, and that will be cleared by the Bulldogs. Reisner now with it to the outside. The forward Gent will get possession back. And now Disselkamp with it. She'll send it out the right side to Stith. So Stith still carrying it into the box. Now she'll cross. And Leibert will clear that one out over the end line. And it will be a corner kick for the Bruins. Sith lines up over there to take this one. This one's short. Edson tries to keep it in. She's going to send it back out. Cross there. Disselkamp shot. Goal! And so Stith to Disselkamp for goal number two. 31-12. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCCTV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, Etan Exterminating, and West Point Bank. McGee will play this one back to Gent. To Dissel Camp. Bratcher now with it on the outside. To Panner, and that's gonna go off of Rowlett. Throw in for the Bruins. Bratcher will take this one. Bratcher going to cross it into the middle. Taylor Edson there with Leibert. A little pressure forces her farther to the outside. Stop. Cross there and one hops into Stanton's hands. That one going to be sent forward by up to Graf. Now Reisner with it for the Bulldogs. Now Leibert will send it forward over every defender. Gent will play it back to Potom. Now 
Now this will camp with it. To Mc oh, sorry, to Howell. Trying to get it to Johnson and Rallo to send it back the other way. Crowfoot chases after it. And it'll be Potom that gets out and sends it out. Throw in for the Bulldogs. De La Rosa Pagan to throw this one in. That one popped in the air. Goes out, another throw in for the Bulldogs. Into Reisner. Shelby Edson kicks it off of Reisner. Let's go over the end line, and that'll be a goal kick for the Bruins. Shelby Edson to take this goal kick. It in the middle, sends it outside to Taylor Edson. Send it forward for Johnson. Libert there for the Bulldogs. Johnson cross, but one hops right into the hands of Santon. out off of the library. It'll be another throw in for the Bruins. It'll be sent back up the middle. Reisner now with it for the Bulldogs. Goes off Panner. And now it'll be a throw in for the Bulldogs. De La Rosa Pagan will throw this one in. Keep it in as she sends it up. The Bulldogs left side. Shelby Edson back towards the center. Kiros now will get it inside midfield circle. Taylor Edson now with it. Hayes with it. Goes off Libert, back out. Panner keeps it on this end. Hayes again with it, now sends it back. Loudermilk with it. In the middle of the field, she'll lay it off to the opposite side to Johnson. Johnson's going to chip it in, gets past Edson, and Santon will go pick it up. Santon will punt this one away. it again. Sending this one forward for Johnson. No one between her and the goal. Cross there. Gets all the way through the box. Hayes will track it down on the other side. Back towards the middle. Johnson tries to shoot. That one will go wide right. Another goal kick for the Bulldogs. Twenty-five nineteen to go in the ball game. Two-zero score. Central Harden on top. They scored just twenty-nine seconds into the game. Haley Panner got her nineteenth goal of the season. And then with thirty-one twelve to go, it was Audrey Disselkamp putting the ball in the back of the net for the Bruins. Hayes now with it, and now to be Panner back with it. Stops, continues her dribble, gets to the top of the box. 
shot as it goes over the crossbar. That'll be a goal kick. John Harden. Tomorrow night, we will have volleyball action. Same two schools, Central Harden, and they do come to John Harden to take on the Bulldogs. That one's scheduled for a 6 o'clock start. Send it up the field. Hayes now with it. Back to Howell. Hayes again with it. She'll get it to Panner. To the middle for Johnson. Johnson turns and try to get it to Edson. More there for John Harden. Edson keeps possession. She'll cross to the far side. Cadence Padgett will track it down there. De La Rosa Vagan on her. Good cross inside. Liber gets to it first. She'll send it back out. Painter again sends it forward. Paget racing towards it. She crosses there. Edson tries to head this one. It'll go over the goal. It'll be another goal kick for the Bulldogs. <laughs> Jaya Douglas checks back in for the Bulldogs. Prior to the game starting, Jaya sang our national anthem. A beautiful job. So we sent up the right side for the Bulldogs. Crowfoot keeps it on this end. Edson gets it back for the Bulldogs. Blades it back, louder melt. Over to Panner. Chips out to the outside, Crowe there. Louder Milk sends it into the box. It's going to go wide right. Another goal kick for John Harden. Livert will take this one. Howell sends it back. Hayes now with it. And that one will be cleared out. Howell trying to get it back. Reisner there for John Harden. Robbins sends it back towards the middle. Hayes trying to get it forward. He keeps possession. Now we'll play it to the outside for Paget. More there for John Harden. Paget shot. Stopped by Santon. Libert will clear it. Back to Douglas near midfield. This handles that one. Loudermilk with it again. Paget now. To Loudermilk. Back to Hayes. To Loudermilk. Inside the box, she shoots. And Santon with another save. over the end line and that's going to be a corner kick for the Bruins. Chloe Hay is going to take this one. How one touch gets past everybody. More races after. It's going to stay in. More to Crowfoot. Possession gained back. That one how. The Hayes at the top of the box. She'll play it back. Hayes with it again. Play it back to Pickerel. 
to Hal. Hal races after that one. Robbins towards the middle. Douglas has it now for the Bulldogs. McGee escorts that out of bounds. Now she'll throw it in quickly to Robbins. Now Robbins will throw it in. I have a foul call. It'll be a free kick for the Bruins. that takes this one. High off the crossbar. And it will be a goal kick from about 40 yards out. This one. At the right center. How there for Elizabeth How there. Back to Loudermelt. Loudermelt will send it to the outside. Barry there. That's going to get over her head. Throw in for the Bulldogs. De La Rosa Pagan will throw this one in. Oh, she'll hand it back. Rowlett throws that one in. Trying to get to Reisner. Got another throw in. Rowlett again to throw this one in. Crowfoot trying to keep it on this end. Savannah Howe gets it up to Paget. John Harden gets it back. Reisner now with it. And Paget right back with it for the Bruins. It's a forward for Satterfield. That one's poked away. Hayes now with it. She'll send it across. Elizabeth Howe. Back to Savannah Howe. Paget trying to get to Hayes. Play it back to Savannah Howe. Pick roll will send it to the other side for Robbins. Robbins plays it back for McGee. Pick roll, but it'll be Reisner that gets to it for the Bulldogs. Now McGee will send it right back up the middle again. Chip it forward for Paget. Paget shot. That'll go wide right. Barry gets to it. Not going to be able to keep it in. Lyra will take this one. Elizabeth Howe gets it back for the Bruins. Rowlett going to send it right down the center. It'll go back to Potom. To Elizabeth Howe. Hayes now with it. Sends it up the right side for Barry. De La Rosa Pagan there. She backs off. Liber comes out. Cross. One hop and in. I believe it was Cadence Paget with the goal. And it was Paget. That one on the cross from Barry. 15 18 to go in the first half. We 
We are back on the air tomorrow night. Again, it'll be volleyball action as Central Harden comes to take on the John Harden Bulldogs. That one's scheduled for a 6 o'clock start. And then Friday night, back here at John Harden again, there'll be football action as the Bulldogs host the Trojans of North Harden. That one's scheduled for a 7.30 kickoff. Foul, and it'll be a free kick for the Bruins. Leibert that takes this one. pokes it away, Panner gets possession back. Sends it back for Shelby Etson. Send it up the far side, goes off Rowlett. Barry keeps it in, Satterfield chasing after it, Rowlett there. Rowlett lets it go out, it'll be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Oh, we had a substitute, so they'll throw it in. Say it's throw in Bulldogs. Rowlett will throw this one in. Barry gets to that first for the Bulldogs to Satterfield. Satterfield's shot goes wide left and over the in line to be another goal kick for John Harden. Libert to take this one. with it for Central. Plays it off for Elizabeth Howe. Sends it back for Elena Smith. Back to Johnson. Smith now with it. Up the field to Johnson. Johnson can get foul line. Stiff now gets it for the Bruins. Sends to the top of the box, Satterfield. Turns, fires, blocked by one of the Bulldogs. Johnson takes the swing out, blocked again by the Bulldogs. Satterfield tracks it down, she'll lay it back to Smith. Smith gonna send it across the field. Shelby Etson gets it. Etson shot, and it's in! Shot from about 25. Eleven forty-seven to go. Shelby Etson gives the Bruins their fourth goal of the day. that one forward. Gent there for the Bruins to Elizabeth Howe. To Panner. To Johnson. She's going to tip it to the outside. Barry out there. De La Rosa Pagan out for the Bulldogs. That'll be a foul. Free kick for the Bruins. And her head's out to take this one. (laughs) 
So a two person wall. Yes, in this one. Top. Johnson gets to it, not able to get a good shot on it. Ball out. Smith comes up. She lays it to the outside for Stith. Stith cross. Trying to get to Barry Barry off the foot and in. <laughs> Stith to Barry for the fifth goal. Beautiful cross by Ava Stith. And Barry puts it in the back of the net. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. That one is an all the way down. Potom gets it. She'll roll it to the outside for Shelby Edson to Panner. Now Johnson with it. Lays it off, gets it back, and it goes wide. Liber got there and just hits it off. It'll go and be a corner kick for the Bruins. Oh, they're going to say it went off of Central, so it'll be a goal kick. Liber to take this one. Stiff gets it right back for the Bruins. Shot saved by Santon. Liebert, that one does go off of a teammate now. It'll be a corner kick for the Bruins. Stiff races, races over. She gets it quickly into Paget. Paget to the top of the box. Howell there. Shot. Bounces around. No one can get to it. Cleared out. Chasing after Woods for the Bulldogs. That'll go out off the foot of Bratcher and be a goal kick for the Bulldogs. Nine minutes to go in our opening half of play. Central Harden up 5-0. Del Rosa Pagan sends that one up the field. Rowlett tried to get it out. Bruins back with it. Shelby Edson. Chips it into the box trying to get it to Stith. Moore was there. Shot off the post from Reynolds. Johnson back with it. Sorry, what was Napier who took that shot? It goes out to be a goal kick for John Harden. Lyra to take this one. Johnson now with it for the Bruins. Taylor Edson. Poked out by Reisner, gets it back. Now Johnson with it. She Sends it at the goal to go into the side net and be another goal kick for the Bulldogs. <laughs> I'm going to have some more service. Nope, everybody's ready. Limer will send this one off. Down near midfield, Douglas heads it into the air. Kicks it uh, gent there for the Bruins. Goes off of Douglas. Crowfoot now with it. Gent across to Shelby Edson. It's going to go down the right side. That'll go out. These subs coming in on both sides.
Well, I'm going to coax that one in. So he chips forward. So you go wide to the left. Stanton will come over and stop it before it goes out. Bring it up and punt this one away. Douglas gets it right at midfield. McGee gets it back. Now Shelby Edson to the outside. That one's going to be sent forward to Johnson. Lays it back outside again. I believe that's App that sends it in to Napier. Down. Ball cleared out. Panner will come back and gather it back in for the Bruins. Reisner gets to that one first. Panner again will play it back, this time to Shelby Edson. She goes to the outside. Laid back for Robbins. Shelby Edson will send it into the box, headed back out. By up to Graft. Up the graph again, kicks this one to the left foot, but Shelby Edson back with possession. Now, Panner with it. To Johnson, back outside for Panner. Panner left foot. That's going to go wide right. And this week we were at John Harden for our three games, obviously, tonight. Tomorrow night it will be volleyball action starting at 6 o'clock as they will, the Bulldogs will host. Central Harden. And then Friday night, it'll be football action as the Bulldogs will host the North Harden Trojans. Coach Paul Gray will bring you all of the football action. Kickoff scheduled for 7.30. That one's sent back in. St. will pick that one up. Four minutes to go in the ball game, or sorry, in the first half. Taylor Edson back with it. Napier gives it right back. Shot wide right. Weibert again to take this one. Reisner and Johnson going for it. Now Reisner and Panner going for it. McGee will get it, gives it back to Shelby Edson. To Savannah Howell. Now McGee with it right at midfield. To Savannah Howell. Gets it to Johnson, top of the box. Johnson shot, that's going to go off of Lybert and over the end line. That'll be corner kick for the Bruins, Taylor Edson to take this one. One gets through the box, cleared out by Kiros. McGee will send this one forward for Ed Taylor Edson. She crosses from there, racing up. Is App unable to get to it, and it'll be a goal kick. John Harden, 2.15 to go in the opening half of play. Score 5-0, Central Harden. And Haley Panner, Audra Disselkamp, Cadence Padgett, Shelby Etson, and Maddie Berry scoring the goals tonight for the Bruins. The goal kick goes all the way to midfield. McGee plays it back to Potom. She'll send it outside for Panner. Now back to the middle for McGee. To Panner, who lays it back for Shelby Edson. Shelby's older sister calling for it. Didn't get the pass. Savannah. How now with it? She'll send it forward for Taylor Edson. More there for the Bulldogs. She'll turn and kick it out. That'll be a throw in for Central Harden. 
into Johnson, back to Taylor Edson. Her cross right at the goal popped out one hand by Santon, and then there will be a foul. It will be a free kick for the Bulldogs. Center. Johnson there, Reisner there for the Bulldogs. It's going to go out, throw in for the Bulldogs. Delarosa Pagan to send this one in. Another throw in for the Bulldogs. Delarosa Pagan. Oh, Rowlett going to do it now. And that will do it. So we head to halftime. Central Harden on top, 5-0. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCCTV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results. The locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Radcliffe, and South Louisville. Online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for all your recycling needs. Located in Elizabethtown on 31W, just south of Exit 91 on Interstate 65, Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. E-Town Exterminating is a locally owned, family-run pest control company and has been serving Hardin, Meade, Grayson, and Nelson counties and the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Whatever your pest control issues are, termites, spiders, crickets, general pests, even moles, their team has the knowledge, skill, and training to safely and effectively eliminate the problem. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. And West Point Bank with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Radcliffe, Upton, Glendale, and West Point. That does help make life simple. Simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. We will be back after this short timeout with second half action. The ultimate Wi Fi experience is finally here. BBTEL Blast Wi Fi from Brandenburg Telecom. With new Wi Fi 6 compatibility and an app that puts you in control of your home network, get ultimate power and performance to every corner of your home. Set up and connect devices, pause Wi Fi, and customize parental controls all from our BBTEL Blast Wi Fi app. It's the ultimate Wi Fi experience, and it's a blast. Ditch your old wireless router and switch to BBTEL Blast Wi Fi today. I'm Jared Cox with ACEC TV, and today I'm here with Brandenburg's Don McMahon. Don, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Let's talk about Brandenburg Telecom. You know, we've you've had a long relationship with us here at ACEC TV, and you've been in business for over 70 years. Yes, um, our headquarters are in Brandenburg, and we have offices in Radcliffe, E-Town, and Hardinsburg. And um, we've since the start of our company, we've had we went from dial-up internet all the way to fiber internet. So it's a lot of changes in that that time span. Absolutely. You know, with all the things going on today, the faster internet you can get, the better it is. And I understand that you have a new Wi-Fi system. We do. We have a, uh, it's called BBTEL Blast Wi-Fi. And what that is, it's a new wireless router. So instead of the, uh, you going to the store and buying a router and having to set it up yourself and make sure all the settings are right and maintaining that router, we do that for you. We provide that router. And this router is a, it's a top of the line. It's Wi-Fi 6 compatible. All your new devices, like your phones and iPads, they are they're, um, Wi-Fi. They have Wi-Fi six capabilities, and what Wi-Fi six does is there's more connections and there's more speed to those devices. So that relates to less lag time in your home because you know nowadays everybody's working from home. 
even from school and even a lot, a lot of online gaming and streaming. So that Wi-Fi 6 really helps bring everything together where there's no lagging. So I know during the pandemic, I had to work from home it, and uh, I worked in web administration. So, I mean, it was such a big help to have that Wi-Fi speed to be able to do all the work that I needed to do remotely. It's really the backbone, you know, a lot of people don't think about all the yes. stuff that Wi-Fi does. Yeah, it's uh, very important, uh, especially have a up, up-to-date wireless router. I mean, you could have the best internet in the world, but if you have a router set up wrong or maybe a lower grade, lower quality router, I mean, your internet's only going to be as good as your wireless router. So we have the top of the line and it's, it'll help everybody. And speaking of top of the line, we just cannot thank you all enough for all the support you give us. It's top of the line and we would not be able to do all the live sports coverage that we do without your help. Well, we enjoy it. Um, we invest a lot in the community, uh, you know, not only in fiber te technology, but we invest in the people in the community. And I think, you know, when we do that, it makes everybody stronger and, you know, we're locally owned and operated, so we're here to stay. Wi-Fi is just so important these days. People don't realize how important that is in a home. One of our important features with, uh, for BBTL Blast Wi-Fi is it comes with an app on your phone. So when you get that wi wireless uh, service, you can download an app and you can pause any device in your house. So if your kids are upstairs and they're supposed to be doing their homework and they're on their phone, you can touch a button and it would shut that uh, Wi-Fi off to that device so they couldn't get to it. Um, it also helps monitor your network you know, from your home or business. You can cut off any device and then you can do speed tests. You can set parental controls. And what that is, is you can set time limits on uh, Wi-Fi access to your devices. So between five and six, every uh, Wi-Fi device would be shut off. And then after six, it would turn automatically back on. So it's, that's a neat feature. And especially these days, you need to keep an eye, you know, on kids and their interaction with the internet. So it, it, it is a handy feature to have. You know, it really is important. I think about how I have a young nephew that's about to turn three this year, mm -hmm. and I think about how my sister is going to try to navigate trying to keep him safe in this digital age. Yeah, you got to keep a close eye on him, so um, this app definitely helps you do that. And, spe and speaking of the digital age, you have a new e-billing app. We do. Um, you know, everybody has one these days, and uh, we, we just got ours, so you can download the e-bill app, and it lets you pay your bill online, of course, but you can also go back and look at your previous bills. You can manage multiple accounts, so if you have a home and business, you can go back anytime and see your past invoices, and um, it's just a just pretty handy feature to have. So it's been a while since we've had you in the studio. What are the future plans for Hardin County? We've been building fiber in Hardin County uh, for a couple of years now, and our focus is going to remain on Hardin County. Um, there some, some recent areas we've been into lately is um, Rineville and Cecilia areas, you know, those surrounding areas. So, you know, eventually our goal is to build out all of Hardin County. Hardin County is a big county, so it's going to take us a little while to get, get to everybody. Uh, I know everybody wants it, and it's fiber is so important, you know, for everything we do in these days. So we, we will be eventually, but it's going to take some time. You know, people just don't understand how big Hardin County is. You know, somebody that's not a that doesn't live here, it just, it just astounds me about how big it is. Yeah, we cover Meade, Breck, and Hardin, and Hardin is by far the biggest county we serve. Well, thank you again for everything you do for HCEC TV. We would not be able to provide the live sports coverage that we do without you. We're glad to do it. Thank you. I'm Jared Cox with ACEC TV, and today we're very happy to have Kobe Gibson from Waddell's Auto Scrap Metal Recycling. How are thanks, you doing? Thanks for having us. Doing good. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your business? Uh, yeah, we're here in Eat Town on 311 Steel Drive. Um, we've been family owned and operated for 53 years. Uh, we provide all types of uh, recycling for people, uh, everything from washers, dryers, um, to cars, bulldozers, semi trucks. Pretty much if it's metal, uh, we can take it. So. You know, when I come up on the Kentucky Parkway on my way to work, I see a billboard for Waddell's with uh, several lovely kids on it. Are yeah. they yours? Yeah, the, the two girls are mine, and the boys are uh, my nephews, so they were a good model for the billboard. <laughs> I mean, it definitely shows that you're family-owned and operated. Yeah, yeah, family-owned and operated, and it, we're, we're, we all live here in Hardin County, and that's kind of like we, we like to put money back in the community um, and do stuff like that. So. And we really thank you for supporting HCEC TV. So um, what are some of the more unconventional things that you scrap? 
Uh, some of the larger stuff, you know, that some people won't take. There's some yards that will not take. You know, they don't have a way to handle bulldozers, unload bulldozers. Um, we do industrial accounts, so we've got a roll-off service. We can set roll-off boxes um, to haul away the metal, but we can do anything from, you know, something like I said, as small as a washer to we've picked up 60,000 pound pieces of scrap before for these factories here in town. And we'll, we like Eat Town, uh, but we will go anywhere. You know, we've got accounts in Louisville, Western Kentucky, and stuff like that. So, and we also offer, like I said, low boy service. Uh, pretty much anything you've got, we can get it picked up for you. You know, and that's so important because Kentucky is such a vast state, and having a family owned and operated business that'll come and scrap your stuff is just so important. Yeah, yeah, it makes it, it, makes it nice. There's a lot of people like that have broken down vehicles that just don't have a way to get them to us. Uh, we've got a rollback for that. So all they got to do is call the office, and for a small fee, we'll go pick it up, and they'll get paid for it and, and make some money for it and make it real easy for them. So. so one thing I didn't know that you all did is you sell parts from vehicles. Yep, yep. So we keep, um, it rotates the cars. You know, we'll rotate them in and out when they get parted out too much. I mean, we've had as many as 1,000. Uh, we try to keep 500 to 1,000 just to have parts for people at, this day and age is as expensive as everything's getting. It's nice to be able to go buy a used part and save some money. So, so you're telling me the next time that a deer attacks my car, I'll be able to go to your yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to have everything. And if not, we can we can look it up and find it for you. So, so um, I one thing also that I didn't know is you, you all recycle things like washers and dryers and refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty much anything that's metal, uh, we take, and it's not just steel items. We take uh, aluminum cans, batteries. Uh, copper, you know, all that type of non-ferrous metal as well. So um, I know that you're based in Elizabethtown. How long have you been in the area? Uh, as far as in Eat Town, uh, it would go back to the early 2000s. Um, but they've been in business uh, for, like I said, 53 years. So uh, did a lot of mobile car crushing back uh, back then. So it's just, but kind of got our roots here, close to home now, and that's where we'd like to stay. Yeah, you know, it's so important once you once you get grounded in a place to want to stay. And we really appreciate you supporting this local TV station and the local school kids by providing the live sports coverage and all the other things that your contribution helps us do. So thank you very much. All right, we're proud to. Thanks. Hello, I'm Regina Ryan and I'm the Director of Hardin County Educational and Community Television and joining me today is one of our longtime sponsors, John Rich with eTownExterminating.com. John, you all have been with us since the beginning and without your support we couldn't do what we do. Um, can you tell us about the company and when it got started and the background of how it got started? Well, um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we love to be able to be in this position where we can uh, support uh, Hardin County Educational Channel uh, with, with all the athletic uh, sports that we can. Um, we feel like it's very important to do that. Um, far as our company, uh, we are a company, that we are actually celebrating our 45th year this year, uh, as of this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really excited about that. Um, but as far as a company, uh, we are a full service exterminating company. Um, we take care of termites, uh, general pest control. We take care of from bed bugs to spiders to, like I said, termites to mice, whatever, whatever uh, pest control that you need. Um, and how many um, employees do you have? Currently, we have around 36 employees. For those uh, who haven't used your company before, what should they expect? Well, we, we do, uh, as far as general pest control, we do a monthly service um, and we will come to your house and service the house, but um, we do a lot of exterior service, but we also go on the inside of the house. Your services are available for both taking care of what happens inside your home and outside your home. So in regards to a client reaching out to you, what should they expect when they come to 
uh, do some service inside the home for termite control, a roach issue, bed bugs, all the things that happen within the house, what should they expect? When a technician comes to the house, uh, they will inspect and they'll assess what needs to be done. Um, everything that will, that will be done will be told to the customer um, prior to the treatment. Um, we do have protocols in place with everything going on with COVID right now. Uh, we will wear a mask, we'll wear gloves, um, we'll sanitize our tanks, our hands, everything. So um, we make it as safe as possible for our technician and for the customer. And exterior is wise. Yes, uh, we, we do a lot of service on the exterior. Um, when we assess the property, we'll see where insects are coming into the building. Um, we will make treatments on the outside, but also we'll make recommendations to those customers. If there's something needs to be sealed or caulked or a, a door jam or a, a, a sweep on a door needs to be uh, fixed, then we'll, we'll, we'll tell the customer about that. Now, besides that one-time service, it's really important to do monthly. Yes, uh, we have a monthly service. Uh, we, what we do is, is we assign that customer with a regular technician. Majority of our technicians have been with us for years, so you'll have the same person each time. But they'll give you a call the night before, set up a time for an appointment. They'll come out, they'll service. If you have any problems in between services, all you have to do is give our office a call or we give the uh, customer's direct line to their technician. They can call them, they'll come back out and they'll take care of it uh, with no extra charge. Now, I know you're located in Hardin County, but where else do you service? Well, we service all the surrounding counties, uh, Meade, Nelson, Breck, Taylor, LaRue. Um, we, we service about nine different counties. So, uh, not that anybody wants insects in their home, but what are the most popular insect that you deal with? We deal with, uh, on a regular basis, spiders, ants, cockroaches, bed bugs, and mice. Oh gosh. And, that's and, then, and then we have seasonal, a lot of seasonal insects. Um, ants during the summer, we have a lot more because of the rain. And then during the, during the uh, spring, or during the fall time of the year, we deal, uh, we get a lot of calls like on crickets in houses. Um, during the winter, we get a lot of calls for spiders and also for mice or rodents. And so, the, and you can help out with any of those types of insects and things? Yes, uh, with doing general maintenance, uh, we can get it where, uh, where you're not seeing anything. Okay. I'm assuming annually there might be rise and falls of little critters or insects that might be a little bit more aggressive than before. <laughs> Is that something that's common year to year? Yes, I mean, we usually have one insect that will pop out each year, um, but generally right now that we have had probably more of an uptick right now are bed bugs and uh, they're, you know, we can take care of them. Um, but it's a lot of prep work for the customers and for us. I was going to say, it, it, anytime you get an infestation, it does take a little bit of time, correct? Yes. It, one treatment for, for a heavy infestation will not take care of it. Right. Um, you were an athlete in high school. What sports did you participate in? Uh, I played basketball. I ran cross country and ran track. And your children? Um, I know that they've also been very active. Yes, uh, I had a daughter that graduated in Elizabethtown in 2016. She was a swimmer. Uh, a daughter that graduated in 2019. She was a soccer player. And I have a son right now that's a junior at E-Town. He's playing basketball and soccer. Wonderful. And, and uh, I want to congratulate your, your oldest daughter is a nurse. She's on the front lines. Yes, uh, she just graduated from University of Kentucky this past spring. Um, she accepted a position at Vanderbilt University Hospital. And uh, so she's down there right now working there at Vanderbilt. I was gonna say on the front lines, those first responders. Uh... Yes, uh, she, she uh, we're very proud of her. Um, she, she's taken on a task and uh, 
we're we're glad that she's in that position right now. Yeah, and it's it means so much to those that she's taking care of, and uh, so that's phenomenal. Your middle daughter is going to become the next generation of E-Town Exterminator. Yes, uh, my daughter Abby. Uh, she has last year she told us that she wanted to come back into the company, and uh, so this year. Uh, She's been working this summer, working with a lot of my supervisors, learning how to sell. Um, she's been working with me a lot on the management side of it and financial, and uh, we're gonna bring her up into the company, and, uh, and so we're really excited about that. I was gonna say, I, it must have been a proud moment when she said she wanted to continue in that role. <laughs> yes, uh, and I always said that Abby was my dad made over. So it's it's exciting to see her to, uh, you know, when I was coming, when I came up into the company, my dad always said that I was going to bring it up to the next level. Now I look at Abby and I, I believe she's going to bring it up to the, the next level for me. That's wonderful. Now people that would like to get in touch, what do they do? Well, they can call us. Uh, our phone number is 270-737-6900. Or our website is www.mugabug.com. That's M-U-G-G-A-B-U-G.com. Amazing. And, you're, and the, really, the nice thing about it is you get to talk to a real person. Yes, we have uh, four wonderful uh, sec or administrative assistants in our office, and uh, they, they will talk to you live. <laughs> <laughs> it really makes a lot of difference. And you're in the communities that you serve. You really give back to that community, and why is that important to you? Well, as a family-owned company here in the community and as a product of this community, I feel like to reinvest into the things like this in sports, athletics, or a lot of other programs that we invest into with the Hardin County uh, school system and with the Elizabethtown Independent School System, um, that we can give opportunities to these kids that normally they wouldn't have money or the advantages of doing that. And I, as an athlete, I always look at giving back to um, these type of programs because not only are they competing, but they're generating uh, friends and longtime friends for years to come. And, and that's what's more important than anything is, is getting these bonds. And, and I look back, I still have great friends that I played basketball with or I ran cross country or track with, and they're probably some of my closest friends. So that's, that's the reason, that's the big reason why I like giving back to these, these programs. Uh, just give them opportunities to be part of something. Well, and developing those relationships, you know, from assigning a specific technician to a resident to uh, taking care of those relationships that you've established in the community. Uh, it's really what it's all about. Well, thank you, Sean, for being such a wonderful sponsor for HCC TV and Brandenburg Telecom's live channel one sports. Uh, without that support, we couldn't do what we do. And uh, I just really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, now it's time to get back to our live sports coverage. So we're looking forward to seeing those athletes in action from all of our area schools. Hello, I'm Gina Ryan, Director of Hardin County Educational and Community Television, and today we are talking with one of our longtime sponsors, Mark Harris Construction. He has been with us from the very beginning, his organization, and through the years it's uh, with apartments and renovations and uh, real estate, of course, and now we are joined by Regina Johnson, who is the property management for two of the items that uh, we're promoting with Mark Harris Construction. Regina, uh, tell us first, our audience, a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been a property manager for uh, about 15 years, and so they stole me when, when they started building these, these two properties. So That's probably a very good <laughs> she said stole, so you are a high priority yes. in terms of getting you on board. Um, the two properties we want to discuss is the Black Branch Storage yes. first, so tell us about that. 
So there's 339 units. Um, we have climate control units, you know, big, small, all different sizes. Um, so you can store just about anything. Can you pay by the month or annual or six months? What's it's, the it's monthly, yeah, and it's a it's gated, so um, everything is secure. There's an on-site kiosk where you can lease on-site. Uh, there's no manager on-site or anything like that. You can also lease online. Well, that's really good with COVID running around yes. and everything like that. So how long would it take to get a storage facility at that location? In just a matter of minutes. You, you can just go to the kiosk or you can go to blackbranchstorage.com and um, lease straight straight online. Okay. And are those, um, I'm assuming that those fill up relatively quickly. A yes. lot of people are needing those. Yes. So for those that may not be familiar with what goes into storage units, what are some of those items that people might put in storage? Um, most people, you know, they store, if they're moving from, a, from if they sold a home and getting a new one, they'll just use it for a few months, you know, to store their household items. Um, a lot of people store things that are just in their garage that they need to get out of the way. Um, we have some who store old cars. Um, and I mean, just about anything. <laughs> so I was going to say, it becomes, uh, well, like you said, a perfect storage place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and rates are in the range, are uh, in a comfortable range? Yes, they're very competitive. Okay, wonderful. For sure. And then another exciting uh, uh, part of Mark Harris uh, Construction and Organization is the Winding Springs Apartments. Yes. Now, tell us where those are located. They are on Nicholas Street, um, close to downtown, close to Highway 62, um, close to everything. <laughs> okay. And uh, what's, uh, what type of apartments in regards to bedrooms, things like that, that are available? These are all two bedroom, two bath luxury apartments. All the finishes are very modern and chic. It's going to be a gated community. We're very excited about it. Um, we have one building open so far, and our next building will be open sometime in October. Well, and if you've been down Highway 62 and you look over that area, they look amazing. Yes, they're gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> and what types of amenities are available for those uh, that will be living there? We have a clubhouse. Um, it's a huge clubhouse. We have one side for the office and one side for just the residents, tailored to our residents. Um, we have a pool and um, it's going to be gated so we're going to be the only gated community in town um, we're going to have a dog park um, several other amenities that well, sounds fun uh, now well, are they fully furnished or can individuals make them their own both we can have furnished apartments uh, we do a lot of corporate apartments for for local places here in town um, and then you can of course bring your own stuff Great. And how do people get additional information about leasing those apartments? So we, you can go to windingspringsetown.com um, or you can call 270-766-1155. And is that process, does it take very long to do? No, not at all. I'm very quick at responding. <laughs> and are they monthly or um, biannual? The yearly? typical lease is a year. Uh, we will do shorter term leases, especially with corporate apartments. Oh, so there are corporate apartments. Yes. Okay, so what might be that added incentive for a corporate apartment? Uh, it's cheaper than a hotel, and, and you have more room. You have a kitchen, you know, um, it, it's like home. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Mark Harris has been one of our uh, very beginning sponsors, mm -hmm. committed to what we do with HCC TV, and without that investment, we would not be able to carry the live local high school sports that we do. Right. And we do close to 80 a year. And uh, it goes back to when Mark was an athlete in uh, this local community and his children were athletes in this community. And he is really committed to helping with that. So being a member of that organization, uh, what would you like to add about that? Well, I think that the owners, they're, they're locally owned. They've been in this community for a very long time. Um, they're committed to the community. They're committed to the surroundings and, and they love to give, to give back. Well, Mark Harris Construction is definitely the embodiment of being active and involved in your community and supporting yes. those around you. And um, we always appreciate all of those 
supporters and our sponsors thingy, and without them, we couldn't do what we do. Absolutely. So, Regina for our audience, just to remind them again, and if you didn't catch that, it's Regina and Gina. <laughs> <laughs> The Regina and Gina show today. Um, <laughs> how can people get in touch uh, with you as property manager? Uh, the best way is probably the by phone, 270-766-1155, um, or email. It's regina at windingspringsetown.com. Okay, thank you, and, and wish you all a great leasing season, and <laughs> also and filling up all those storage facilities and yes, everything. Yes, for sure. So thank you for joining us, Regina. And thank you for watching our HCEC TV, Brandenburg Telecom, live sports coverage. It's time to meet another of our wonderful sponsors with HCEC TV and Brandenburg Telecom's live sports coverage. Today we are joined by Whitney Ballou. She is a physical therapist at Physical Therapy Associates, which has been with us for many, many years, almost practically from the very beginning. And without their support, we could not do what we do in regards to our live sports coverage. Whitney, we are six feet apart, so we're going to remove our masks so you can hear us a little bit better. and. Uh, uh, see our happy faces. That's right. So, Whitney, uh, tell us about the history of Physical Therapy Associates. I have been with the company for almost five years now. Guy Wallace, who is very well known in the community, started the company in 2002. Um, we are up to six clinics now. Um, our clinic that we are in now in the Elizabethtown location has actually continued to grow. We add on and then we add on a little bit more. So, growth is a good thing, especially with the economy the way that it is these days. Um, it has it has grown not just employee wise, obviously patient wise, just the way that we use the building for um, a lot of the local sports, both school related and the uh, extracurriculars that people participate in. And the building is constantly in use with the with the turf that we have now too. So right, that's awesome. But the turf really provides a, a <laughs> well, it gives you extra space and gets to absolutely do, gets you to do what you need to do. What types of services do you provide? So we provide the obvious, the orthopedic related, the surgicals, um, those that are not surgical as well, just your general injury for the athletes that I know that you and I have specifically discussed. We treat a lot of um, neurological conditions from vertigo to dizziness, balance type issues. Um, we work on a lot of gait with patients. Our turf provides a great area for us to do those types of things. We provide traction, dry needling, ASTEM, which is just an instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Um, we have a lot of services and a lot of different certifications within our licensed individuals that can provide a pretty good variety of treatments for our patients. And, and with diabetic patients, there's some mm -hmm. uh, procedures Correct. that you provide too? Neuropathy is something that we see quite a bit of. There is an anodyne treatment that we use with some of those patients. Um, and then again, as far as the gait side that it's related to a lot of those neuro problems, we use a lot of our turf for that as well. Uh, COVID-19 has probably affected your business. So yes. talk about what's been going on with COVID-19. So all of physical therapy across the board was shut down for roughly a week, a um, little bit less than that, just depending on what area you were in. They deemed us as non-essential to start. And then a lot of people went to bat for us, thankfully, saying that we are essential, which we definitely feel that we are. We were cut down to our caseload with just those urgent and emergent cases, which would be your surgical patients who needed to come to us so that they didn't end up worse than they were prior to surgery. Um, fractures, really bad injuries that needed quick, if we didn't get to them quick, that they were gonna be in a lot worse shape than they were off. So it cut us down quite a bit. We cut our caseload by gosh, probably 80%. We've slowly built that back up, so we're getting close to more what we would consider normal, but we can see a little bit of everything now, so we're thankful to be kind of free reign with everybody again. Well, and in regards to delivery of service, I'm sure that you all have always taken protective, absolutely, um, whatever type of protection you need in terms of keeping both you and the patient right. uh, safe and things. Um, in regards to uh, athletics, high mm -hmm. school athletics, you, know, you used to think, oh, those high school uh, athletes, those middle school athletes, even elementary school athletes, they're young, their bones heal, their muscles heal. Um, what, how many of those patients do you see on a regular basis? They do heal much quicker, but yes, they do still get hurt. Um, 
You know, that has actually been, that has actually gone down in number as well. The sports were cut back there for a while. We weren't, people weren't getting out. So people weren't doing as much as they were prior to all this COVID stuff that occurred. And our caseload's getting back up to normal with that. Our kids make up, I got probably anywhere 25 to 50 percent of our caseload, just depending on the given time frame, sports seasons that we're in and things like that. It's definitely increased since the school sports have been allowed to play. They were, I was not going to be surprised if we saw more just because they weren't getting the time to practice and do things before they were playing games. But thankfully, we haven't seen a whole lot of injuries, um, which is good for the, you know, bad for business, but definitely good for the individual. And that's what we care about the most. Awesome. Yes. Uh, you are a former high school athlete at uh, Central yeah. Hardin High School. Yes. Uh, just briefly talk about those years. <laughs> the glory days, as I like to call them. I played soccer and basketball both. I wouldn't trade those years for the world. Um, I had very good coaches, very good teammates, and I just kept saying, I was telling patients and employers and, and or our coworkers that I wouldn't trade those days for the world. So I can't imagine what some of these kids have gone through that haven't been able to play. They've missed out on not just senior years, but any year of high school, any year of middle school that you can't play those sports. That keeps so many kids not just out of trouble, but keeps them in shape, you know, keeps the mental aspect of their lives in check too, which is so important. And I'm glad that they've been able to, to participate in a lot of those things now. I know there's still restrictions with it, but those are days that I wouldn't take away from, from my life. And I know that, that those kids wouldn't either. So I'm glad to see that they're back in, back in session with a lot of that. And with your sponsorship, we're able to bring live coverage to those that can't attend Correct. the sporting events because we're limited in number. Correct. They can watch that event at home and right. they can stream it and they can share it. And, and so that's, that's a huge benefit. When we, you were an athlete, did you notice HCEC TV? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's such a good privilege for them, especially with having limited tickets. Mm -hmm. I come from a very large family, which we were just talking about. So thinking about my parents, my aunts and uncles that came to games, or even just friends, you know, you've got so many classmates that you hope can be there. Again, that's part of the, the, the glory days, as I call them. You know, your friends going and cheering you on. And so for them to at least be able to watch it and talk to the players about how they did, know what a great catch or what a great shot, does mean a lot to those players. So it's great that you all are able to provide that service. Right, and it does give them a little bit of extra exposure Absolutely. to, you know, to the, the broader audience and Absolutely. things. Maybe a coach from a Division One or Division Two might exactly. check out, check you out. So, what about your commitment to the community? PTA is very involved. What are some of those things that you all really uh, enjoy participating in? So, sponsorship is something that Guy Wallace is big on too. You know, there's a lot of different recreational leagues that he's a part of from all of his kids that participate, but. Um, you know, the marketing aspect, there's a lot that, that they're involved, with, involved in with that as well. Our athletes are, I say some of our prized possessions, but it's really great to be able to work with them, just to be able to see them get back on the field. Um, working with any patient is excellent, but when we can get our athletes specifically back to a school setting, whether it's just going to class because they can get off their crutches or get out of their wheelchair or get back on the, the field or court, um, it's great that we're able to play such a big role in that for them. Awesome. Yes. Uh, for individuals that would like to contact Phys mm -hmm. Physical Therapy Associates, what can they do? Um, they can call our office at 270-234-1569. Um, we're open 7 to 5, Monday through Friday, so they can get in contact with us for that. Um, we also rent out our turf. Well, we did pre-COVID, but we've got 5,400 square feet of turf facility that we also use for some of those recreational activities that hopefully once we get a little bit lifted on our restrictions that we're able to start incorporating that again as well. Okay. And that turf application is really important. Mm -hmm. What I, I said it just gives you a wide open space, but what kinds of things take place in there? It is great for our ACL patients specifically. We have them doing some very high level activities, some running, jogging, sprinting, a lot of agility type activities with ladders and hurdles. It's great for our neuro patients where we're doing gait and balance stuff, just trying to walk laps. Um, working on getting from a, a walker to a cane, just being able to have that space where people can open up without feeling scared because we're too close to other tables or other patients and things like that. It's been great as far as COVID goes because the six foot rule has not been a problem. <laughs> um, we are very spaced out, probably 20 feet between each table, which has been very nice. Um, we actually added onto the turf initially and then that didn't seem big enough, so we actually added on again. So we can also do throwing programs. We have the distance to be able to do those types of things. Um, for our baseball and softball players, football players, of course, it's set up like an actual football field. We have the yards marked out, and it's nice to be able to, to work with that on with them, too. I would say that physical therapy is one of those 
areas that has exploded in the last even decade. Right. Um, when I was very young, you never heard, really, I didn't know of anyone that ever had gone through physical therapy. But now physical therapy extends to even the mindset and Absolutely. the emotional. Uh, so can you address that? Why do you think that that has occurred? Pain is perception. Everybody perceives it differently. Of course, pain tolerance is different across the board. But if you hurt, it absolutely changes your entire, entire mental state. So our physical abilities will absolutely address our mental abilities throughout daily life from, from work to just waking up in the mornings. I actually had never had, I wasn't super familiar with PT myself, even growing up around sports and, you know, teammates tearing ACLs and spraining ankles and things like that. Um, I went to school actually to be a dentist to start. So I thankfully had some great mentors that led me to PT with my background and my love for, you know, the body, the anatomy and all of that stuff that I loved class wise. But pain is perception. So it has just continued to grow. People realize how much of a benefit it is for maintenance in some cases, but most of all prevention. A lot of our athletes that we've talked about prevention of those of those injuries, if we can stop it, especially with a lot of the um, sport isolation, people doing just one or two sports focused on that. You know, us growing up, like I said, I played three or four growing up, so that's kind of changed a little bit. People mm -hmm. are tending to specialize, which is totally fine, but it will sometimes cause some more injuries. Um, and that specialization may cause one injury over and over again. Correct, like we had also discussed. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So we are continuing to grow, maybe because of that, as far as the athletes go, but Pain is perception, and I think that the more that we are able to get that out there and people realize how good it can be just for an everyday life, not just returning to sport or returning to work, um, I think the more that it gets out there, the you tell your friend, you tell your friend, and then everybody's like, oh, it can help a lot more than, than we think. Well, I appreciate Guy Wallace, and I appreciate Physical Therapy Associates, and Whitney, I appreciate all that PTA offers this community, and it's really, um, it's been phenomenal. And you're in a, a couple of different counties now too, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and same to you all, by the way, for what you all do for the county. Um, yes, so we have the Elizabethtown Clinic, but then we also have Ratcliffe, we have Mead County, Hodgenville, Bargetown, and then a Louisville, South Louisville Clinic as well. Right, so easily acceptable for anywhere you need to go, right. contact PTA, and it's pretty easy to get a recommendation also. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we are actually a direct, direct access state, so you can go to physical therapy without a doctor's order. Now, insurance would depend on, on some of those cases, but it's really easy to get physical therapy. All you got to do is call us. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you again, Whitney, for Absolutely. joining us, and thank you for joining us at home. Uh, we appreciate all of our sponsors on HCC TV for our live sports coverage. And without Physical Therapy Associates, please support them. We could not do what we do to bring these wonderful athletes into your home on a regular basis. I am Kyler Barkley. I am with the Media Arts Program in HCC TV. I am a third year student, and today I am interviewing one of our longtime sponsors, President of West Point Bank, Josh Hubbard. Josh, tell us a little bit about West Point Bank and its history. Yes, so West Point Bank was purchased by First Breckenridge Bank Shares uh, in the early 1980s. Uh, we were one facility there in West Point, and we've expanded from West Point into Upton. Glendale, Radcliffe, and Elizabethtown. So we have five locations throughout Hardin County, uh, owned by First Breckenridge Bank Shares, um, which owns uh, several other banks uh, throughout the Central Kentucky region. Uh, but West Point Bank is uh, in Hardin County with one location uh, in um, Upton, which is actually in LaRue County, but four branches in Hardin County uh, and one in LaRue County. Could you tell us a little bit about services offered new and old, like? Absolutely. So West Point Bank is a full service bank. Uh, we provide uh, free checking accounts, uh, savings accounts, certificates of deposit, uh, IRAs. We also uh, make loans for just about anything. Uh, one to four family, primary residence loans, farm loans, agricultural loans, uh, multifamily. Uh, automobile loans, uh, you name it, we, we can pretty much do it when it comes to banking. So we obviously, are, like I said, are, are a full service bank. Is there any specific 
areas of involvement in your community that the bank makes? Yes, yeah, so we really strive to serve the communities that we operate in, uh, primarily all of Hardin and the surrounding counties. Um, we pride ourselves in our employees living, working, going to church uh, in the communities that our banks are located in. So whether it be participating in, with HCEC TV, doing the, the sports coverage, um, the Heartland Parade, West Point River Days, Glendale Spring Fest, uh, Upton Days, just uh, the Hooray for Heroes or the Radcliffe Mayor's Breakfast, whatever that may be, we really strive to be involved and give back to the communities that we serve. So you were talking about community involvement and HCC TV sport coverage. Is there anything, like are you passionate about covering sports? Absolutely, so we've been a long time sponsor uh, of this programming. Um, when I grew up in high school, when I was growing up in high school, I obviously played high school sports. Uh, my son plays high school sports. Um, a lot of the employees who work for me, their children play high school sports. And I just think that sports are great for children of all ages. Uh, it teaches them uh, a lot of things. One, uh, how to be a good teammate. Uh, you need to be a good teammate in order to be a good employee. Uh, it teaches them accountability. Uh, it gives them, teaches them work ethic. Um, I think it teaches them how to win and how to lose. You know, life uh, can be hard. There's going to be ups and downs. And uh, winning a game, losing a game, winning as a team, losing as a team, I think it just gives valuable insight to, to just life in general by playing sports. I completely agree and understand, and we appreciate your sponsorship. Now, is there any other extra information you would like to let the viewing audience know? Uh, just in general, um, West Point Bank, uh, like I said, we strive um, to provide the best possible customer service that we can provide. Uh, we are uh, extremely enthusiastic about the communities that we serve, uh, the citizens in those communities, and uh, we would really like to be your bank um, and to establish uh, a relationship with you if we don't have one, and if we do have a relationship with you, to just further expand upon that relationship. Uh, we are, uh, uh, again, strive to provide the absolute best customer service uh, and just, uh, you know, uh, are just thrilled to be a part of the community that we serve. How can people get additional information about your bank? Do you have any sort of contact? Yes, so we obviously, as I, as I said earlier, we have five locations in, uh, or four locations in Hardin County, one in LaRue County. So West Point, Radcliffe, Elizabethtown, Glendale, and Upton. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can like our Facebook page. Uh, you can also visit us at westpointbank.com. All right. Thank you again for your continued support. We wouldn't be able to do it without your support. Again, we appreciate you, and let's have a good season. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal helps keep America clean. Got a car that needs to be scrapped? Old refrigerator not working? We pay Todd Dow. Call Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling today. Family owned and operated. For over 40 years. Premier Metal Recycling Company, we even handled the unloading. Waddell's Auto and Scrap, now with two locations. Scoring tonight started quickly for the Bruins. Haley Panner on a assist by Audra Disselkamp with the first goal in the net with just 29 seconds into the ball game. That was followed by Audra Disselkamp from Ava Stith, 31 minutes to go in the first half. And Cadence Padgett on a cross from Maddie Berry. And the third goal was 15-18 to go. Then Shelby Utson just four minutes later unassisted from about 35 yards out. And then it was Maddie Berry from Ava Stith for the last goal for the Bruins with 10.30 to go in the first half. Teams will flip-flop ends. Manny Santon in the goal for the Bulldogs. 
And I see Lily Craft out on the field for Central Harden. Not sure if Potom will stay in the second half or not. Looks like she's putting on a jacket, so I believe it will be Lily Craft in goal for the Bruins. Just a reminder, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, there will be volleyball action. Central Harden comes to John Harden to take on the Bulldogs. And then Friday night, it will be football action here at John as the Bulldogs will host the Trojans of North, of North Harden. Football game scheduled for a 7.30 kickoff. Coach Paul Gray will bring you all the football action. Bulldogs have the opening possession. Rowlett sends that one forward, trying to get it to Crowfoot. Elizabeth Howell sends it back. Taylor Edson now with it to Hayes. Out, back outside for Taylor Edson. Elizabeth Howell now with it to Panner. Back for Shelby Edson. To Bratcher. She'll send it into the middle. Crowfoot, no, sorry. That was Dickens there. Now to be Panner. That'll be cleared by Libert. McGee with it. Over to Taylor Edson. De La Rosa Pagan got it back, but that one goes off of Howell. There's that one goes out and a throw in for Central Harden. Quickly into Taylor Edson. To the middle for Johnson. He's going to send it forward for Hayes. Rally it there. Gets it out to Douglas. Rushing over is Johnson, who gets it, trying to get it to Stith. I'm going to come back towards the middle. Howe for Hayes. Back to Johnson. Johnson left foot. That one goes off Rowlett. Back out. Crowfoot almost got to it. It was McGee that gets it over to Panner. Panner to Taylor Edson. That one go well over the crossbar. Be a goal kick for John Harden. Stith sends it back to the middle. Johnson is there. Reisner there for the Bulldogs, sends it back. Bratcher going to try to keep it on this end. Reisner again with it. Bratcher will play this one back to Shelby Edson. To Elizabeth Howell. Howell going to go to the outside for Taylor Edson. Back to McGee. Back to Taylor Edson. Edson racing for it down in the corner. He's going to cross there. Almost back out to the 18. That one popped in there. It'll come down. Edson will control it. To Johnson. Tried to slip it in to Edson. Ball knocked around. Libert there along with Edson. McGee squared and then Rowlett sends it back out. McGee with it. McGee going to cross. On the foot of Stith, she lays it back for Johnson. Or sorry, Hayes. Hayes tries to shot with left foot. That went off Reisner and into Satan's hands. Bratcher will play that one back to Shelby Edson. Over to Gent. Panner going to send it forward. Stith racing after it. Rowlett gets there first for the Bulldogs. And she'll just send it down. It'll be a throw in for Central Harden. Bratcher to send this one in. I apologize. Down in that corner, I cannot see. Central Harden retained possession. It's a throw in. Johnson with it. 
quick shot off of Rowlett. Ed's in there, but Satan comes up and makes the save. For John Harden, Wednesday night they'll be back in action as they will hit the road and travel to North Harden for a district matchup. The Bruins back in action on Wednesday also as they will take on the Elizabethtown Panthers. That ball over the end line. Goal kick for the Bulldogs. Jenna Livert back to take this one. Gonna go out to the right. They go out. We throw in for Central Harden. McGee to throw this one in to Taylor Edson. Johnson gets it forward. Edson now on the outside with it. Delarosa Pagan there for John Harden. This will be crossed towards the top of the box. Wiley and then Reisner clear it out. Gent chasing after this one. Able to get to it before it goes out. Gets it to Elizabeth Howell. She brings it past midfield to Johnson. Johnson going to send it forward. Rally it there for John Harden. She'll clear it out. Bratcher going to keep it on this end. Outside for Ava Stith. Stith keeps possession. I believe that was Wiley that broken that one up. Now Panner back with it. Reisner steps to that one. Johnson keeps possession for the Bruins. Now she'll play it back to Shelby Edson. Panner squares, sends that one forward. Libert will escort it back to Santon. Big hop. Douglas heads it forward. Crowfoot sends it forward as well, but Bratcher will play this one back to Kraft. Stiff now with it. Sends across the field for Elizabeth Howell. For Taylor Edson on the far side. She keeps it in. Low cross. That one will be kicked over the inline by the Bulldogs and will be a corner kick for Central Harden. Edson will, Taylor Edson will take this corner. Sent right near the front of the goal. Shot from Elizabeth Howell goes high, and it will be a goal kick, John Harden. Santon will take this goal kick to the outside to Rowlett. She'll send it up the middle. Reisner there. Reisner going to send it up. Left side for the Bulldogs. Shelby Hudson races over. Knocks it out. Throw in for the Bulldogs. Reisner will come up. Thought she was going to take it. Looks like it'll now be Dickens that comes to take it. Shelby Edson will get it to Panner, to the outside for Stith. Stith going to send it forward. Hayes there for Central Harden. Libert there for John Harden. Cross towards the 18-yard box. Going to get all the way through. McGee on the other side with it for the Bruins. She crosses back towards the center. No one there. And Libert tries. To, she actually plays it off of Stith. And it will be a goal kick, John Harden.
Throw in Central Harden. Get it into Elizabeth Howell. Back outside for Taylor Edson. Squares up. Now she's going to cross, trying to get it to Stiff. Plays it back for Johnson. Shot. And save by Maddie Fenton. And sent right back to the other end. Hayes heads it to the outside for Taylor Edson, who lays it right back for Hayes. Shot by Howell. That goes wide right and over the end line. Goal kick for the Bulldogs. Shelby Edson now with it. Panner plays it right back to Shelby Edson. She'll send it to the outside for Taylor Edson. She'll lay it outside for McGee. De La Rosa Pagan there for the Bruins. That one goes over the in line and will be another goal kick, John Harden. 29.08 to go in the ballgame. Leibert will take this goal kick. So send this from the outside. Douglas with it. Trying to get it to Reisner. Panner back with possession. To Johnson. Trying to get it back. Rowlett there. She'll send it back up the middle. Crowfoot now with it. And then Shelby Utzon right back with possession for the Bulldogs. Jen will send it to the outside for Taylor Edson. Send in trying to get it to Panner Rowley got in the way. Have a stoppage. Reisner was hit pretty hard with the ball. They're going to stop play there. This is a Hardin County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC TV is a division of Hardin County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, Physical Therapy Associates, Blue Ribbon Renovations, <laughs> E-Town Exterminating, and West Point Bank. So Reisner will step out for just a few moments. coming in for John Harden. So a 28.06. Stanton will punt this one away. Al now with it. Back to Jen. All hamburgers and hot dogs currently half price in two second stand. All hamburgers and hot dogs. Outside for Taylor Edson. Drives it in. Trying to get it to Johnson Leibert there for the Bulldogs. She'll clear it back out. They're out. Throw in for Central Harden. Robbins to throw this one in. Laudermilt now with it for 
Central Harden. To Johnson, back to Elizabeth Howe. Back to Gent. And around to Shelby Etson. Johnson with it. Trying to find some room. Shot. Off the crossbar. Save by Sam. Oh. I'm going to say it went in off the crossbar. Crossed entirely the end line. So that will be McKenna Johnson's first goal of the evening. Her 13th on the season. Sorry, no, her 11th on the season. 26 39 to go in the ball game. Reisner back in for the Bulldogs. Johnson races down to get possession for the Bruins. Be a foul. Free kick for Central Harden. Panner to take this one. That one shot one hop and right into Stanton. Stanton, sorry. That goes out. Throw in for the Bruins. Bratcher quickly throws it in. Shelby Edson back to Jen. Thumbs in. Central with possession again. They're going to send it to the far side. Rallo to get there first. Just going to play it to the outside a little too far. For more to get to, throw in Central, Bratcher, and to Panner. Panner squares up, shot. That's going to go over the crossbar. Goal kick, John Harden. That could be Liber. It will take this goal kick. Douglas with it for the Bulldogs. She'll send it forward. Now Barry for the Bruins gets it back. Elizabeth Howe right in the middle of the field. I believe that was Rowlett. No, it was Reisner that kicks that one. Pickerel sends this one up the right side to Barry. Howe now with it. Laudermilt in the middle. Shot with her left foot. Going to go wide left and a goal kick for the Bulldogs. More subs on both sides. 23-11 go in the ball game. Central Harden leads 6-0. Had five goals in the first half. One goal here in the second half. Barry going to try to keep it on this end. Wiley plays it outside to Douglas. Hey, 
Savannah Howe gets it back for the Bruins. Trying to get it to Loudermilk. Sent back the other way. Kraft will come up and pick it up. Roll it to the outside. To Savannah Howe. Back to Kraft. That'll be sent up the middle of the field by Shelby Edson. Elizabeth Howe to the outside to Barry. Satterfield streaking ahead, calls for it. Liebert going to get there first. She's going to turn it out. It's going to go off of Satterfield. It'll be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Satterfield now with it for the Bruins. Crosses. Shot from Padgett. Not able to get a lot on it. Ball back out. Kicked around. Liber tries to clear it. Padgett shot. Saved by Santon. And it will be a corner kick for the Bruins. No Bruin has headed outside for the corner yet. Barry runs out. She'll take this one. Barry now will cross it into the box. Santon there goes off a couple of players. Comes out. Satterfield going to try to take a shot. It's going to go wide right. It'll be a goal kick for John Harden. That one sent right back up the middle of the field. Now sent to the outside. Barry with it, plays it back. Savannah Hall will play it back to Pickerel. Elizabeth Howell to Shelby Edson. Now Pickerel back up the field for Barry. From just the 18, Santon will move to her right and make the save. Shelby Edson heads it back. Loudermilk there. She'll race after to the outside. Caro's there for the Bulldogs. Lyra will clear that one. Robbins with it on Central's left. Elizabeth Howe. Lottermilt with it, shot, left foot, one hop, Santon with another save. And Savannah Howe will let that go out. She'll throw it in there. To Sanderfield. Rowlett there, when it gets back, she'll kick it out. Throw in for Central Harden. Satterfield to throw this one in quickly to Barry. Right back to Satterfield, but Douglas gets there first. Savannah Howe, back to Pickerel. Kiros now with it. Plays it back to Reisner. Reisner going to send it forward. Kraft will come over. She'll kick it back towards the middle. Elizabeth Howell is there. To the far side. 
Loudermilt with it now in the middle. Back for Shelby Edson. Edson going to send it down the center of the field, trying to get the center field. Flybert back. She sends it to the outside. De La Rosa Pagan will be out there as well. And that goes out, throw in for the Bruins. Paget to throw this one in. That goes out. It'll be a throw in for John Harden. Seventeen oh five to go in the ball game. McKenna Johnson with the only goal here in the second half for the Bruins. It leads six oh. Pickerel back to Loudermilk. Now Satterfield with it. Has it cross? Elizabeth Howell back to Loudermilk. Tried to poke it free. Rowley gets there first. She'll take it up the right side. She'll send it towards the middle. Crow fit there. Pickle gets to that one though. And now to be Jit with it. Elizabeth Howell sends it outside to Savannah Howell. Louder melt with it. And that one chipped forward. And we'll go out and be a corner kick for the Bruins. Paget is out there. That one gets through. Douglas had it. It's going to be poked out off the Bulldogs. Smith sent it in. And that will go out of bounds. Throw in for Central. Smith quickly gets it into Barry. Ladder melt to the outside for Paget. De La Rosa Pagan there for the Bulldogs. Paget turns it back. Shot. Two hops and Stanton picks that one up. Robbins chases after that one. It'll go out. A throw in for John Harden. Delarosa Pagan to throw this one in. Try to get it to Reisner. Ball knocked around. That one went off the Bulldogs. It'll be a Bruin throw in. Quickly into Paget. Back to Loudermilk. Robbins now with it on the side. Up to Paget. He's going to send it forward for Satterfield. Back to Paget. Trying to get to Hayes down the middle. Dickens heads it, but it goes right to Maddie Berry. Shot there. Going to go wide right. Goal kick for. The Bulldogs. Libert to take this one. Douglas plays it towards the middle. Savannah Howell was there. 
Water melt with it again. Sprinting forward. So you can go to the outside. Throw in four of the Bruins. Paget quickly into louder melt. Try to get it back to Paget. Got to go over the in line and be a goal kick. Limer to take this one. Robbins will send it back for McGee around the pickle. Now Elizabeth Howell with it to Laudermilk. Robin plays it back to the outside to Paget. Paget again with it. Della Rosa Pagan there. Shot. Santon, one hand save. To the outside. And that'll go out and be a throw in for Central Harden. <laughs> Subs coming in. Trying to get it into the box. Once and out, it'll be a corner kick for the Bruins. And down into the corner for this one. He sent in, it was through the box. Out the other side, central with it. Rowlett now with the ball for the Bulldogs. McGee races back. Robbins forces her to give it up. Goes to Savannah, back to McGee, now up. Hayes with it. To the outside. Shot stopped by Leibert. Trying to play it out. That'll go out and be a throw in. Douglas gets it back for the Bulldogs. That'll go out. Quickly in by Moore to Reisner. Reisner will cross. That crosses the in line. It'll be a goal kick for the Bruins. 8.50 to go in the ball game. Gent will take this one down the middle of the field. Sorry, that was Panner that took that one. Throw in for the Bruins again. Riley will send that one back out near midfield. Bruins play it back. McGee now with it. To Savannah. How? Hayes with it. Hayes shot. Off the post. Rebound out. Shot. It's in. Aisha Potom, who started as keeper.
Sorry, that was Autumn Callahan. There are two 25s on the roster for Central Harden. Potom being the keeper. Callahan wearing the number 25 on the field with her goal. Panner quickly with it back. 7-0 now our score. Back for Hayes. Hayes shot off one of the Bulldogs. Callahan. Now it's going to be cleared by the Bulldogs. Sit forward. Sit back towards the middle of the field. Hayes again with it. How shot. That'll go wide right. Goal kick for John Harden. Leibert will take this one. 6.30 to go in the ball game. Douglas heads it towards midfield. McGee, then Matt Reisner now with it for the Bulldogs. Savannah Howe applies the pressure. McGee going to clear that one. Throw in for the Bulldogs. Moore comes forward to throw this one in. That goes out. Another throw in Bulldogs. Moore sends it in. That'll be sent out by Bratcher. Why to the far side? That'll get out and be a throw in for the Bulldogs. De La Rosa Pagan to throw this one in. It's going to be sent to this side. Goodman shot just wide left, and that'll go over the in. No. Be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Faith Goodman with that shot. De La Rosa Pagan will throw this one in. Go over the end line. Throw in again. Oh, sorry, throw in for the Bruins. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get all the way into the box. Napier chased after it, but it goes over the end line. It'll be a corner kick. For the Bulldog, or sorry, for the Bruins, Hayes to take this one. We're gonna go short corner, Bratcher with it. Get it back to Hayes. Hayes will send it over to Gent. Gent going to take a shot. That'll go wide right. Another goal kick. Get a reminder, tomorrow night we are back on the air, 6 o'clock. So scheduled volleyball match between Central Harden Bruins and the John Harden Bulldogs. Again, scheduled to start at 6 o'clock from John Harden High School. And Friday night, we're back here with football action as the North Harden Trojans come into the dog pound. Kickoff scheduled for 7.30. This 
Spencer Macy back. McGee gets to it. It's going to go off of Douglas over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for the Bruins. Kraft with, will take this goal kick. Now Hayes with it. Napier chasing after, I believe it was Rowlett that got there first. Kicks it out, throw in for the Bruins. Fifth to the outside for Savannah Howell. She'll turn. Trying to get it to Callahan again. Out comes Stanton. Stanton. Ball back towards the middle. Rowlett pops it up in the air. Moore there. Goodman there for the Bruins. Sent back. Hayes shot. Popped up in the air off of a Bulldog. And Stanton gathers that one in. Stanton will punt that one away. Hayes stops it. to Bratcher. Back to Hayes, top of the box. Shot, one bounce, and Santon with another save. We're under a minute to go here at John Harden. It goes out off of Central Harden, throw in Bulldogs. Crowfoot to throw this one in. Jim plays it back towards the middle. Hayes to Stith, back to Gent. Hayes again with it. Sends it forward. Goodman races down to get to it. Rowlett for the Bulldogs there. Savannah Howe, shot. That'll go over the crossbar. Five seconds to go. This will be our last play. As Central Harden will win. They move to 9-4-1 on the season with a 7-0 victory over the 0-11 now John Harden Bulldogs. This is a Harden County Educational and Community Television student production. HCC-TV is a division of Harden County Schools. Live Channel 1 programming sponsored in part by Brandenburg Telecom, providing service for all your telecommunication needs. Physical Therapy Associates, more personal attention for more effective results with locations in Elizabethtown, Hodgenville, Rackliffe, and South Louisville, online at physicaltherapyky.com. Blue Ribbon Renovations is a new locally owned Mark Harris company that is offering 0% interest and no payments for 12 months on windows, doors, fences, roofs, decks, siding, and much, much more. To explore your options or schedule your appointment today, call 270-763-3186. Waddell's Auto and Scrap Metal Recycling, a family-owned business with competitive prices, pickup service, and a friendly staff available for all your recycling needs. Call 270-982-7206 to talk to someone about scrapping metal and recycling. Etan Exterminate is a locally-owned family-run pest control company. It's been serving the surrounding areas of Kentucky since 1976. Call 270-737-6900 or go online at mugabug.com. In West Point Bank with five offices located in Elizabethtown, Upton, Glendale, and West Point, let us help make life simpler. Hometown banking made simple online at westpointbank.com. Again, we're back on the air tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, as the John Harden Bulldogs will host the Central Harden Bruins in 17th District Volleyball Action. For all of our workers here at HCC-TV, I'm Bobby Thompson saying so long. Good night.